British public school snots, who apparently have never worked a day in their life, have been found out in my legal research. And I am going to talk about the insanity of my having the fight to have my name taken off a list of murderers and terrorists, while a true murderer and terrorist, the Islamic fascist who was responsible for masterminding the Lockerbie bombing and the deaths of over 200 people, it was released by the British government, and he went home to Libya to a hero's welcome. Have you seen the footage of him getting on and off the plane in Scotland? Do you see them shaking his hand, the British governmental officials who hate me? The very same labor governmental officials who hate Michael Savage shook the hands of a real murderer. And he went home to a hero's welcome. The British government under Gordon Brown is suicidal. They have sympathy for those who kill their own people and antipathy for those that would defend them. In researching... The emails going back and forth between these snotty public school brats in England, you're not going to believe what we found. I've told you some of it, but you haven't heard all of it. I want you to go to michaelsavage.com at your leisure and look at the new legal letter to Britain. I will summarize some of those points today as I go in and out of the news. The uh, memos are not going to be believed. You're not going to believe them. When you read them, you have to see them. And I have to go back again to what I said to you before that in a world of hype, a world of self-promoters, in a world of people trying to make a name for themselves, it's very difficult for you to take me seriously if you are a born skeptic as I am. I'm a born skeptic. I don't believe anybody, particularly anybody in the media. So it would be natural for you to have some skepticism about what I am saying, but I want you to try to not put aside your skepticism, but try to listen to what I'm saying to you. Just try for a minute. How do you square a government, the British Labour government, releasing the mastermind of the Lockerbie bombing, shaking his hand as he leaves Scotland, and putting me on a list of people to be banned because of my unacceptable behavior? Now, I want you to understand that to the British government under Gordon Brown, speech has become behavior. Do you understand how Orwellian this is? Speech has become behavior. And my speech, although it has never called for violence, may be offensive, may be shocking, may be very offensive and very shocking, as I'm sure it is to many people. It is shocking and offensive to people. I'm aware of that. Do you know that what I found in those emails should make your hair stand up? Do you know that they took statements from my, the founding of my Paul Revere Society, such as a nation is defined by its borders, language, and culture, and they use that as evidence of why I should be banned from Britain. I'm not making this up. I swear to you. I swear to you. They said that because Michael Savage believes a nation is defined by its borders, its language, and its culture, he has engaged in hateful speech. He has engaged in unacceptable behavior. Because he believes in borders, language, and culture, he has provoked and incited violence. Do you have any idea what this means? It means that the liberals have become the most extreme form of, se of thought police. It means that the liberals have declared conservatives criminal. It means that the liberals in England have criminalized conservative thought and conservative speech, which is why every liberal who really believes in the liberal uh, credo should buy my book, Banned in Britain. You need it as a document. You need to see the proof. You need to see I'm not hyping you. And you need to share it with your liberal friends. It may finally awaken you from your slumber before it is too late. It just might save America from the fate that Britain is suffering under these, pri these public school snots. I am one man fighting an entire government. Don't you understand what's at stake? I hope you do. And I hope you understand this is not hype, nor do I care about selling a certain number of books because it will fatten my wallet. I hope you understand that I'm well past that point in my life. And I hope you understand that there's a greater principle in these shows about being banned in Britain and this one man's fight to free his name from this list of murderers and terrorists. I hope you understand. Savage. eloquent in their own way armstrong and getty weekday morning 6 to 10 talk 910 knew want to 
to do this with you. I want to take you inside a courtroom. I'm going to act as my own defense attorney. I'm going to ask you, the American people listening to the Savage Nation, conservative, libertarian, liberal, independent, to be the jury. Hear ye, hear ye. The court of the Savage Nation is now in session. All rise. I want to read something to you. We discovered the following memo are being passed back and forth before they put me on this list of murderers and terrorists. Listen to what one of them said. Savage has a show called The Savage Nation. His views are extreme. He considers immigration, liberalism, and Islam to be the most dangerous threats to the U.S. He broadcasts on approximately 350 stations and receives an estimated weekly audience of 8 million listeners. This is what they wrote to each other. He is the third most popular radio talk show host in America. Now listen very carefully, folks. Members of the jury, here's what they wrote to each other in a summary of why I should be banned from Britain and that my fundamental rights be denied. Quote, Savage is the founder of the Paul Revere Society, which, according to its mission statement, aims to, quote, to take back our borders, our language, and our traditional culture from the left, ero corroding our great nation, close quote. This was a hit on me because I am a conservative. Now, the very same government that took offense with me because I believe in borders, language, and culture. I want you to listen to, to Scottish Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill, another far leftist, explaining why he released the Lockerbie bomber. Listen to clip two. Our justice system demands that judgment be imposed, but compassion be available. Our beliefs dictate that justice be served but mercy be shown. Compassion and mercy are about upholding the beliefs that we seek to live by, remaining true to our values as a people, no matter the severity of the provocation or the atrocity perpetrated. Rubbish. 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 Where is the compassion and mercy towards Michael Savage? You low-life lout, you. You release an actual murderer who masterminded the blowing up of an airplane and the killing of hundreds of people, saying that you did so out of compassion and mercy, while Michael Savage, because he is a conservative and he is a white male, receives no such compassion and no such mercy. You say that compassion and mercy are the beliefs that you seek to live by, and yet your cohorts in London have no compassion or mercy for a conservative? named Michael Savage, that you colluded behind my back to destroy my name and reputation and to deny me free travel and free speech, and you didn't notify me, you didn't give me a chance to explain myself or answer as to whether these statements are actually true, this is your idea of compassion and mercy, Scottish Justice Kenny McCaskill? Listen to clip three now. For these reasons, and these reasons alone, it is my decision that Mr. Abdel Bassett Ali Mohmed Al Megrahi, convicted in 2001 of the Lockerbie bombing, now terminally ill with prostate cancer, be released on compassionate grounds and are allowed to return to Libya to die. So, in other words, if I had a terminal illness and I was going to die, you'd let me into your rotten, stinking nation? Is that what you would do? If I were terminally ill, you'd release me for compassionate grounds? Well, let me tell you something. I ain't going to die so fast. Let me tell you something, Mr. Justice. I'm not going to get sick so fast. And let me tell you something else. I'm going to fight you until the last breath in my mouth. I'll make sure my name is cleared, and I will name you and shame all of you. Before I am through, I will show the world what you have become. I will show them how you, how you have not only acted to defend your own people and your own honor. How you've acted not only to, def not, to not defend Britain, to not defend your borders, to not defend the English language, to not defend your culture, but to destroy it from within. Whether it be out of cowardice or treason, I'm not sure if it's a combination of one or the both or something else. You talk about compassion and mercy out of one side of your mouth, while your cohorts in London show no such compassion and mercy to a man whose only crime is that he is an outspoken white male conservative 
And that is your idea of compassion and mercy? I want you to go to michaelsavage.com and read the new legal letter that was sent by my attorneys, the defamation claim to Jackie Smith. And then I want you to look at the secret emails. Well, I can't give them to you now, but I want you to see the cover copy, the table of contents and the excerpt for Band in Britain. And once you look at these documents and put them together, and then you combine them with the fact that the very same labor government that did this to me, and remember what they did to me, you say, oh, big deal, you can't go to Britain. You didn't want to go anyway. Well, you have to see the larger point. That defies, excuse me, that denies me my freedom of movement, which is a a denial of my fundamental civil rights. It denies me a freedom of movement. Do you understand that? It's a denial of the European Commission on Human Rights laws. It's a denial of the U.S. Bill of Rights. It's a denial of British law itself. It's a denial of everything that is decent.